So the first thing I want to talk about that we should not tolerate is poor communication. You know, 90% of a project manager's job is communication. Think about it. Project communication occurs for project planning, for project reporting, for change control, uh, when we're leading brainstorming sessions, responding to risks, influencing stakeholders, and meetings with project sponsors, just to name a few. Great little cartoon here. We must have miscommunicated. The, the remodel was supposed to be a contemporary. Poor communication often results in conflict and may cause delays. Now think about a software developer who misunderstands the project requirements. The developer's upset because the users did not provide clear requirements. And the users are disturbed that the developer did not understand their obvious needs. Now the developer has to go back and revise the design. Uh, they have to change the code. There may be some additional testing that has to be done requiring an unexpected a uh, couple of weeks of additional work, which of course impacts our schedule and budget. I once helped manage a program to implement uh, core software applications for an insurance company and to build interfaces for third parties. This program included the implementation of a policy administration system, a claims administration system, a billing system, a client system, a, a new imaging system, a new business intelligence system, and again, several, several uh, third-party interfaces. And the program was comprised of 45 project teams with more than 150 people. Now, many of these individuals worked on two to four uh, different projects at w one point in time. So company and third-party resources included project managers, program managers, business analysts, developers, testers, mainframe resources, network resources, and many, many department resources. And then the third-party resources would rotate on-site and off-site from week to week. So I want to share just a few things that I did to help uh, manage communication. First of all, we assigned a communications manager. Now, this was not a full-time position. It probably took that individual, it probably took 10 to 15 percent of their time. But the point was that we had a person that was designated to manage communication. Then we developed the communications plan. And in the plan for each piece of communication, we ask ourselves, who is the audience? What information do they need? How will we deliver that information? How frequently do we need to, to deliver that information? Why do we need to deliver that information? And so, yes, we created the communications plan early in the project during the planning, initial planning process, but every month I met with the communications manager to update that communications plan for the upcoming activities. And then we communicated through multiple channels. I don't think it's sufficient just to communicate through one or two channels. In this program, we communicated to more than a thousand people, about 500 people in the home office and more than 500 in remote locations. So we delivered the message uh, through channels such as meetings and newsletters and emails and an internal blog and video. We focused on interdependent relationships. You might wonder, well, what do I mean by that? Well, with those 45 project teams, um, we have a tendency as project managers to 
think about our own little world, that is just the things within our projects. But what I would do is I would meet with uh, the project managers once a week, and I would ask them to focus on the relationship between their project and other projects. So the project manager that was managing the policy administration system project, I would say, what are the activities that you've got coming up and how might that impact the claims administration group or the billing group? And so it was a meeting expressly uh, that we expressly used to focus on those in interdependent relationships. And as we would do that, we'd keep track of risk, uh, capture those, communicate those between the teams, and we also focused on enhancing our virtual communication since we had people in a lot of different places around the world. The program manager and the project manager used appropriate tools such as web conferencing, teleconferencing, instant messaging, and a project management information system.